two, one. Bear with me. Go ahead. Thank you, Peter. This is uh, Ray Weldy of the Lower Southampton Township Board of Supervisors. Welcome to the public meeting of the Lower Southampton Township Board of Supervisors for Wednesday, March 10th, 2021. Um, at 7.30 p.m. right now, I have 7.42 p.m. The meeting is being held as tele via teleconference and was advertised as such. Um, if we could begin the meeting by everyone standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag, the flag of the United States, States of America, America and to, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under, under God, God indivisible, Liberty, and liberty and justice. And justice. Thank, you. Thank you. Before tonight's public meeting, the board met at 6 p.m. for an executive session. The executive session lasted from 6 p.m. until immediately before this meeting. During the executive session, uh, the board focused on three issues. One was a personnel issue that had to do with a pension, received an update. Um, from an attorney. The second was a, another personnel issue that we'll address later in the meeting. And the third was uh, suggested salaries and raises for department heads and some township employees, which we'll also address later in the meeting. Uh, that being said, the first thing on tonight's agenda would be public comment. The public was invited to send her comment in at the uh, uh, email address public comment at lower southampton at ls township.org um either joe or christina is there anything to be read into the record board chair there are two i'll start with the first one it's a mr pat anderson um i don't believe pat mr anderson has submitted um, an address but his, his comments are the following why why can't Summerton Pool, Maplewood Pool, and Lower Makefield, no, Lower Makefield Pool open, and yet there seems to be problems opening the Dolphin Pool? Please explain. That was the one question. The next one is from a Mr. Hank Booth, 8 Spring Meadow, Rockford, the Gold PA. Uh, since September 2020, Invoice went with a law firm of Genova Berms and Begley Carlin and Mandio have been submitted for legal services rendered involving litigation concerning a former township employee. At September, at the September 9th meeting, the invoice for Genova Burns was separated from the consent agenda requested by Mr. Sutaratis because it was a personnel issue. Mr. Sutaratis then queried why the bill is not being paid or getting paid. Mr. Kutsaratis replied that there wasn't much he can say because it was a personnel issue that he would talk to Mr. Shannon privately. When those invoices have been subsequently submitted to the board for approval, two supervisors consistently voted nay to disperse the funds. I agreed that litigation is a personnel matter. However, voting for payment is not. Under section, section 5 of the Township Supervisor's Handbook, all supervisors of the board have a financial responsibility to see that all bills are paid. Refusal to pay exposes the township to lawsuit, in addition to damaging the township's credit rating. I would like to know why Mr. Kutsaratis and Ms. Cummings are voting for non-payment for services rendered. Thank you. That's all for public comment. Thank you, Joe. Um, uh, I mean, as far as the pools go, I think we're set to discuss the pools tonight and the pool contract and our plans for 2021 with the Dolphin Pool. Um, I can't say anything about number two. I don't know if anyone wants to. No, there's no, no need to. Pardon me? There's, there's no requirement to respond. A question was asked. Susan and Kevin do not have to respond. Okay. Um, see, and that's it for public comment, Joe? Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, 
since there's no further public comment, we'll move on to the first item on the agenda. Um, the first item is the consent agenda. The consent agenda, item 1A, approval of the minutes from February 24th, 2021. Item 1B, approval of accounts payable March 10th, 2021. Item 1C, approval of certain reoccurring monthly bills March 10th, 2021. Um, would anyone like to make a motion to uh, about the consent agenda? Mr. Mr. Waldy, real real quick question. I uh, I sure. just I just want to make sure that there's no. I do see one Genova and Burns payable for litigation. I just want to make sure it doesn't have anything to do with uh, the the Ottinger lawsuit. Peter, I, I think there was. I just, I, I just want to make sure it doesn't. It it doesn't say it in the in the payables, but I think there was a comment from when we got the payables in an email that it that it did not have anything to do with that litigation. Okay. I don't I don't recall seeing that email. Uh, can we just confirm that? Then I'd be fine with everything. Uh, Peter, do you recall yes. that? This this pay this this accounts payable for uh, March 10th does not include the uh, case that uh, Mr. Petrotis is uh, referring to. All right. Thank Great. you. Peter. All right. Thank you very much, Peter. Thank you, Ray. You're welcome. Um, would anyone like to make a motion uh, re involving the consent agenda? I'll make that motion. Go ahead, Ed. What's your motion, Ed? To, to approve the accounts payable. Thank you. Second? I'll second that, Ray. This is Susan. Thank you, Ms. Cummings. Uh, and as usual, on the virtual meetings, we'll go down, do a roll call vote alphabetically. Ms. Cummings? Yes. Thank you. Ms. Kaplan? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Kutsaratis? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Shannon? Yes. Thank you. And Ray Weldy, I vote yes. The motion to approve the consent agenda passes 5-0. Uh, Item 2 on the agenda is an update from the Youth Advisory Council. Um, Ms. Kaplan and I sat in on a meeting with the Youth Advisory Council uh, last Thursday evening, I believe. And they have some big plans. And uh, in that meeting, uh, Mr. Joe Fiacco asked if he could address the Board of Supervisors at tonight's meeting about their upcoming plans and some initiatives that they have planned. So, Joe, if you're here, I'll turn it over to you. Oh, maybe he's muted. And Joe, are you there? You're muted. Please unmute yourself. Is he there? Joe he was Fiaco, there, right? Wasn't he? He is in the uh, attendance. His picture was up earlier. I don't know where he went. <clears throat> He's down here at the bottom, but his microphone's off. I'm making more phone calls tonight than. <laughs> Thanks, Frank. <laughs> About time you started to do something. <laughs> He's not answering. So there he there is. He is. Right. Uh, okay. Mr. Fiacco, you have to unmute yourself. You're muted right now. He is talking. He's 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 been muted right now. That's what it is. Yeah. Joe, can you hear us? Joe Fiacco? You're muted. If you're, you're muted, if you can turn your microphone on somehow. Well, hit the, hit the screen and it should pop up. Okay.
there's a little microphone on your screen, either center of your screen or to top, right top of your screen. You have to hit the microphone to speak. You are muted right now. <laughs> Is he looking under the table? <laughs> He's calling me now. Oh, okay. He, need the he, sound, he sounds like me. <laughs> Somebody's cutting their nails. <laughs> well, why don't you try this? Speak, Joe. See if the board can hear you. Can you hear me through Frank's? Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. I was getting a lot of feedback anyway, and now I have a delay. Uh, but, but thanks for the introduction, Ray and Debbie. Okay. Thanks for attending the March 4th meeting. This is brutal. We, we have been working with the... I don't think I can do this. There's way too much delay. We can we hear you. Fine. We hear you fine. My brain can't come... Uh, let me let me I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn the volume down so i don't hear myself in a delayed manner um so thanks to you can you can you look at your computer screen and this is an organization that covers the entire nishamity school geographical area and they are doing some wonderful things uh, to, to to help our young people to avoid uh, the, the pitfalls of drug addiction and and a lot of the early on kind of triggers to get to that, you know, smoking and vaping and, and things of that nature. So on January 28th and February 25th, we had a joint Zoom meeting with members of the Nishamity Coalition for Youth. And they were basically introducing to us a number of things that have been going on. And we are very excited about being able to help them help the youth in lower Southampton with their efforts. And um, with that, I'm, I'm holding up a brochure that the, uh, the, the Chamonix School District has approved to hand out to the students in, in the district. And it is basically a call for students to get involved. And it's uh, a podcasting effort. And it's going to be pretty much run by the students with some oversight by adults. Um, is, 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 am I coming through pretty clear? Yes. Yes. If, if the board allows me, I'm just going to read the, uh, I think it would be helpful if I just read the announcement and then it's for the public can hear it as well. Um, so you know what it's saying. The uh, Nishamini Coalition for Youth, NC4 Youth, a uh, team podcasting. Few things are more important to families, schools, and communities than helping kids thrive and protecting their health and welfare. Who better to help deliver this message than our teens? Podcasting gives teens a voice. NC for Youth, a drug-free, community-support, grant-funded community prevention coalition, is seeking teens for a youth-led, adult-guided podcast initiative. NC for Youth team podcasters will have the opportunity to meet with and interview individuals in our community that promote the above goals. Teens will be involved with all aspects of podcasts, including making decisions about whom would be interviewed and how the podcast shall be directed and produced. Podcasts will be scheduled monthly. All podcast production equipment, microphones, headsets, editing software, and training will be provided by NC for Youth. Computers are not included. All aspects of podcasts, including training, production, and interviews, will be done virtually until a return to in-person meetings are deep safe. Eligible teens must be in grades level 7 through 12 and either live or attend schools in the area of Lower Southampton Township, Pendell, Langhorn, Langhorn Manor, uh, Middletown, and Humeville Borough. Adult supervision will be provided by NC4 Youth, all adult supervisors have their background check clearances as required by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Teen podcast needs include podcast host interviewers, 
podcast technical editors, podcast producers, and directors. Everyone is welcome, especially we have a need for those who have interest in a public health career, interest in journalism and writing, interest in broadcasting, social media, knowledge like Twitter and Instagram. Benefits to involvement is the community service hours, strengthen college and job applications, and learn new skills and have fun doing it. And then there's some contact information for those students that are interested. So I'm very excited about this opportunity. I'm hoping we get a lot of involvement of our youth and the way it's going to be set set up, it's um, we can't have too many involved. They're going to break them down into managing groups of about eight or less. So no matter how many people are interested, there will be opportunities for our youth to get involved. So I'm excited about that. And I wanted to basically ask the balance of the Board of Supervisors, Ray and, and Deb were aware of this, to uh, uh, indicate their support for this as we, we the, the North Southampton Youth Advisory Council, uh, join efforts with the Nishamity Coalition for Youth for these efforts. Well, um, you did want the, um, the township to uh, make a thousand copies of the flyers, is that correct? Uh, yes, yeah, so the township made the copies. I believe Carol Trioli has them. And oh, we, will okay. we will be delivering them to the uh, Pequesting Middle School, which is the only school in Lower South that, you know, fits this description. Uh, and we, we're just waiting for the Board of Supervisors to give concurrence that that, um, that we can do that. So you already received the flyers from the township? That was it? Is that what you said? The flyers were received by the uh, NC for Youth, the organization that's actually running it. And again, it's already been run by the Neshaminy School District because uh, uh, there, that's where Lower South was kind of like a missing link on the Neshaminy Coalition for Youth efforts. So, it, no, this, I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean yeah. the thousand copies that did. Did you want to ask the township to make a thousand copies for the Youth Advisory Council? Yes, please. Right. I just wanted so, the rest of the board to know what your request was. Okay. And Joe, then these these copies will be distributed at what the three middle schools, Sandburg, Maple Point, and and Pequesing, and at the high school. No, the only request we are asking you for is copies that can be distributed to Pequesing Middle School. Copies are already going to be going to the other schools because they fall outside of Lower Southampton Township. Okay, and that would be then only the seventh and eighth graders of Pequesting? Because it's uh, a seven to 12 initiative? Seven, seven to 12 is the group. Okay. Joe, is there a, um, a connection between Middletown and Lower South for the use of advisory? Is this gonna be a, a joint effort? No, actually this is an effort by the Nishamity Coalition for Youth. This is an organization that was for, formed a few years back and they um, they have a lot of very similar um, desires for helping our youth that we have had. And they have some very educated and well-versed professionals that are involved. And they actually have funding that they have received a five-year uh, grant from this, I believe it's from the state, um, it might even be a federal grant, but it's it's a, a funding for five years for their efforts to try and get our youth to stop, um, you know, the different triggers um, of addiction. So whether it's getting them to not start smoking or quit smoking or getting them to, uh, to not vape, um, get obviously opioids and things of that nature. So... The best thing I can compare it to is the Mothers Against Drunk Driving. When, when the is the is what we don't it's acceptable to be drinking and driving as it is today. It took many, many years. So the, the Nishamini Coalition for Youth is, is trying to get these initial efforts on the ground to, to make our youth aware of how uh, hazardous and deadly it is to start using drugs, whether it's it's nicotine or, or alcohol or or vaping. So 
Um, this is a program that they are working and they have funded. In this, our group wants to support them in any way we can. And so, so what do you want? A motion from the board to allow the, the thousand copies to be made? I, mean, I, I didn't realize that that was necessary. I, I thought I was you know, basically making you aware of this, okay. get, getting your support for it. Um, so that when, when we provide these copies to the school, then it's it's with the knowledge of the, the board of supervisors that they endorse it. And if, if they don't, by all means, let me know and then and we'll, we'll do what we need to do as far as that's concerned. I didn't, I didn't think a thousand copies of flyers, if, if you guys were endorsing it, I didn't think making copies at the township level was the, uh, the level that we we needed to to get a vote on approval by the board of supervisors. But if that's the case, by all means, that's that's what I am formally requesting. Right. Well, now, the, the, the YI the YAC is a subsidiary board of the board of supervisors, so I'm not sure we. I don't know, Frank. Do we have to have a motion, or if any of the member wants to no. weigh in, whether they support it or not? Well, no, I just wasn't sure what Joe was looking for. So I think the board is Joe asking for motion of support. I think. Well, okay. he's just asking for a ver verbal support from the board of supervisors um, of this effort that is is already being undertaken in the Shamity, and we're hoping to get Pequesi involved with the balance of the Shamity School District. In what I think is a very exciting opportunity for our youth to get involved in helping themselves. So somebody say yes. I definitely support yes. it. I'm fine with it. I'm great yes, with it. I'm fine with that. Yeah, I'm I'm fine with it too. And if the school, if the township doesn't want to do it, I'll do it. <laughs> so, but but on, what I'm not clear right now uh, is do you have the thousand the thousand copies in your possession of the flyers as we speak? I, I personally don't. I, I thought Carol may have had them. If not, she's going to, to handle that chore for the Youth Advisory Council. Um, and okay. Okay. Again, I, I believe the intent is to deliver them on Friday. If, unless the supervisor tells us not to. No, no. What, what I did was I asked Joe to um, do a cost analysis on how much it would cost for the township to print because they're collared flyers, how much it would cost the township to print the thousand copies um, versus um, a printer to print the thousand copies of the, the, the colored flyers. Were you able to get that information, Joe? I have no idea. No, no, Joe, Joe Galdo, are, are you, um, were you able to get that information? Deb, from, from what I was uh, told, we did. We are in receipt of it. We have not really produced the copies yet. And from what I also understand, the copies to be made are in black and white. Either, either way, we could do the color format or we could do the black and white. The estimated cost should only be anywhere from eighty to $100. Um, if it's a little bit more than $100, that's, that's all the expenditure that you're going to have on this. Okay, and we were told they were going to be color. If that's, is that correct, uh, Joe? Not to be out. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was the request at the meeting, correct? That we had Thursday night that you wanted the flyers in color. I just wanted. I just want everybody to know what they're doing here. Yes, we're open to get color copies. Okay. That's what I thought. Okay. And then we'll pr we'll produce color copies for you, sir. Not a problem, Joe. It's just really, there's not that much color in them, but not a problem. Thanks. Again, the cost, the cost is the minimus. It's basically a little, maybe a little bit over hundred. It's not an issue. Okay, very good. Joe, isn't uh, when are you looking at, to obtain those copies by? I know, Tom, you're up against the wall on time. He said yeah, Friday. Friday. Delivered them on Friday. Friday. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Joe. Frank, thanks for the use of your phone. <laughs> thanks. thanks, Joe. 
rest of your meeting. Thank you for bringing this to our attention. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thanks. Moving on, item number three on the agenda is consider awarding the 2021 pool contracts for the Dolphin Swim Club and Furtabar Pool. There, there's been some modifications, I think. There have been. The, from the original contract that we talked about. And uh, uh, I know there's some additional information that Matt, Matt has. Uh, I don't know who yeah. else has the information. I think Frank, either Frank and or Matt, if Matt's in here, or if not, then yep, Frank. I'm here. Frank. Okay. So, so over to you. I talked to Matt about it. Matt can address it. Uh, there's there's the standard contract, which uh, they were unwilling to change. They added addendum pages, which you've seen, which are attached to it, part of Exhibit 3. Uh, basically canceling it by April 15th if you want out. And uh, if if the government shuts us down, uh, we can get out of the contract at that point, but we, only, we get reimbursed for lifeguard hours, pool labor, and lab testing. So, um, and I also had Matt get the automatic renewal clause removed. But, you know, I think it was clause 18. So I'm sorry for interrupting Matt. You can take over. Yeah, uh, I was going to address those same topics. Uh, I know one of the other big issues was the uh, fee schedule had a lot in the front. There was a large payment scheduled for April and then through May, June, July with a smaller payment in August. I think they met us in the middle on that request, and they've spread it out to five even payments. Um, we also um, considered pushing back the start date of the contract to closer to when the um, you know the kids are out of school and summer camp will be beginning, uh, right at that June Saturday, June nineteenth, which uh, shows a, a pretty significant savings of almost seven thousand um, dollars. Other than that, uh, the consistencies, uh, which were part 16 and part 14, uh, are both addressed in the addendum. And um, you know, unless the board has any questions for me, it would be my recommendation to uh, move forward with the pool contract for Dolphin Swim Club and the Furtabar Pool. I have a question, Matt. Yep. With, um, and I know. Um, I read the email from the Bucks County Department of Health that no matter where the pool is located, still have to follow the governor's guidelines as far as um, capacity, allowed capacity. So if there is a limit in capacity, will the pool be able to sustain itself um, just being fiscally responsible? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, in, in and I did send these out to the supervisors regarding indoor outdoor pool operations and just the guidance, uh, preliminary guidance from the Department of Health. Um, me and everyone who I've talked to in the pool community, sees this is a step, a huge step in the right direction. Uh, I'm confident that it's something that we can execute safely and execute fiscally responsibly. Um, you know, there, there will be some additional, uh, you know, costs that we already anticipated in the way of signage and elevated sanitization. Um, and it's, it's definitely something that I think by those summer months, uh, if you saw the body of the email from the representative from the Department of Health, it, it projects um, that we will be uh, permitted to operate um, within those guidelines, yes. Well, we have to check back in May to see what the capacity is going to be, according to the email. So if the capacity is 50%, just putting that number out there, because we won't know till May. If the capacity, just for an example, is 50%, will the pool be able to sustain itself with that capacity percentage? That's what my question is. Yes, we would be able to. It would it would be a blended uh, financial um, 
picture. It would have a summer camp component, <clears throat> which would contribute to the expenses of the pool. It would also have uh, season passes and guests of uh, season pass holders uh, as another revenue source. Preliminarily, uh, I'm already thinking it, it probably is not going to be the best summer for pool parties or movie nights. Uh, so the other programming revenue wouldn't play into that, but I, I'm pretty confident that we could execute a fiscally responsible 2021 pool season. Uh, I don't think we're going to set any records, but it, it would be something that we could execute, yes. Okay, thank you. Any other board members' questions or comments? Not at the moment. Yeah, I, th I think the township's in a lot better shape with this revised contract than we were a few weeks ago with the other contract. I mean, at least we have some protection should things go downhill as far as um, restrictions that are pan or that are COVID related. And one other note, real quick, Mr. Chair. Um, you know, this still has the cancellation for April fifteenth, um, which is more than a month from now. Over that time, it'll give um, me the opportunity to come back to you with a financial projection. Obviously, the projections that are in the 2021 budget, um, I, I have, you know, the, now the price amount has changed for the contract. Um, it's going to be something I have to, you know, put the pen to paper and figure out exactly how we can do this and make sure that it's done safely. But again, the, the, um, addendum states that we can cancel up until April 15th and uh, with the board's approval we hope to have something put together for you because the price points are going to have to change based on the attendance and our uh, you know the way that we structure our camp program we have some additional costs on that end as well so we just want to make sure that we cover everything uh, while still doing it safely. Thank you Matt. Any other comments? <coughs> uh, hearing none, then we would need a motion to award the 2021 pool contract as presented uh, tonight to American Pools. I'll make that motion to award the contract. For the Thank you, motion. Club. Thank you, Sue. Motion made by Ms. Cummings. Uh, would anyone like to second that motion? I'll, I'll second. second. Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, Seconded by Mr. Shannon. Thank you, Ed. Uh, Ms. Cummings, your vote? Yes. Thank you, Ms. Kaplan? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Kutsaratis? Kim, are you here? Mr. Kutsaratis is having technical difficulty, I believe. Uh, Mr. Kutsaratis, oh, he's unmuted now. Can you speak now, Ms. Kutsaratis? Yes. yes. Sorry yes, about yes, that. Yes, yes. Sorry to interrupt. That's all good. Kim, Kim, did you? Too. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Shannon? Yes. Okay, Ray Weldy, I vote yes. So the motion to award the full contract passes with a vote of 5 0. Next up is item four on the agenda the minor subdivision application for a lot line change for JDSH Investment Company LLC. 244 East Myrtle Avenue, tax map parcel numbers 21-012-301 and 21-012-302. Uh, um, and for those unfamiliar with that area, that is the location of the old Madrigal's Meat Store. Um, I'll turn it over, I guess, to Mr. Mike Italia. Thank you, sir. Uh, so the demo for this is going to be commencing shortly. We've already gotten DEP uh, clearance and they've uh, done this asbestos abatement uh, to make sure nothing goes in the atmosphere. I expressed my concern of uh, residents living in there uh, with four legs so that they uh, manage that control <clears throat> when they start demoing. Uh, we like to do it when it's cold so there's less uh, issues. We don't want anybody scurrying out in the neighborhood. Um, the applicant is on here. He'll be able to exp expand that. But what will happen is, um, you know, the neighbors will start seeing fencing go up and whatnot. Uh, and then any, uh, you know, if there's any issues with uh, 
uh, things running out or whatever that they get missed, uh, please just give us a call. Let us know. We'll pass it along um, to the applicant. We're not expecting any issues. Um, they did uh, identify a family of raccoons in there, so I believe they'll be getting relocated and taken care of. Um, the lot line change was presented in front of Planning Commission with unanimous support, support with uh, the neighbors around as well. Um, it's it's just two houses now instead of, I believe there was a plan for three at one point, so pretty comparable to the area. Um, they'll be conforming lots to no variances needed. Uh, they'll take care of the improvements around there uh, and, um, you know, the other sewer hookup. But uh, definitely uh, to turn it, you know, close one chapter and uh, open another kind of thing. I, I think the applicants in attendance, do you have anything to add to that? John, I saw you earlier. Uh, hi, this is John De Pasquale. I'm the applicant's son and also attorney. My dad, I think he is on although I don't see his camera turning on now. Uh, I don't think I, we have anything to add to this application uh, besides what Mike just explained. Um, he, it, I, don't, I don't believe last was ever part of uh, our application. It, it was always true from the beginning. I think that's a minor correction I wanted to make for the record. Um, but I, we have nothing to add. We're gonna put a good product in this spot um, and we are happy to uh, to proceed out. It looks like my dad logged on now. I don't know if he has anything he'd like to add to the application. You're on mute, Dad, if you want to. No, I'm, I'm off mute. I'm good. Um, everything Mike said is spot on. We're, we're, we're locked, loaded, ready to go. We're excited about the project. We were, you know, again, we were never in three lots. I, don't, I know that was out there, but I think that was a previous that application. Us. And uh, we're good to go. We're so excited. I prepared a resolution approving this. There was some tax, tax issues, and uh, it's all covered in the stipulation. They're going to be paid when the boy, when the first house sells. Uh, this the resolution pre preparation date in the bottom left hand corner is three nine twenty one. I made a correction in that it was a lot line change in the now therefore clause. Uh, the applicants agree to it and ready to go. Frank, does this resolution have a, uh, a number? It, it has the numbers. I don't know what the feedback is. It's terrible. But it, what happens is when you go to settlement, we get a bring down. The title company gives us the final numbers. They have to, in order to get clear title, the purchaser has to, we will get that information and the applicants agreed to pay the taxes at that time when the first property sells. No, no concerns about getting the right amount. Okay, so so I have a question, um, Deb Kaplan. So is, is there any kind of, um, for lack of a better word, investigation to go how far back money's owed to the township from this property? Well, I talked to Denise and the number as of March 4th was $12,075 for sewer. And the taxes, we got a title report, which indicated 19 and 20 were due. And, um, and Joe was confirming that with the tax collector, but when we go to settlement, there'll be a title report and there'll be a bring down to get the, the exact amounts due. Thank you. And these fees are all agreeable to Mr. D. Pasquale and, and your organization? They are. They are. We, I mean, just for the, the board's um, background, I mean, we, we went into this property a little over a, a year ago. Um, and from the lack of a better word, kind of got sideswiped by the a seller. Um, we had to make some moves after we invested some money to do our due diligence and, and spend some money on engineering to go in and find out that they couldn't transfer a title. They were in a foreclosure situation. We worked out a deal with their lender. We bought the note. We took it through foreclosure, got it back, 
cleared up a lot of the judgments and the debt. We know that the township had the unpaid sewers, the unpaid taxes, and we worked with Mr. Dillon and, and, and Mike to talk about how to get those rectified um, and have been on this project for over a year and have worked diligently to get it to this to this point. And um, the agreement that we had to pay that at the first closing is instrumental to us because we've outlaid a ton of cash to get this deal uh, and this project off the ground and, and get it underway. So we appreciate everybody's efforts and everybody's um, help in, in allowing us and, and helping us get this done. So thank you all. Well, thank you. That, that's that been an eyesore for many years and yeah, it's it's really, you know, drug down the, the, uh, the, the look of that neighborhood. So mm -hmm. we appreciate, yeah. you know, your involvement. Well, thank you. We appreciate your help. Thanks. Um, if there's no further questions then, and I hope I'm not stepping on anybody's toes, but if there isn't any further questions, we would need a motion then to pass the resolution as proposed by Mr. Dillon. So moved, Mr. Waldy. It's Kim Kutzeradis. Go ahead, Kim. Yes, yeah, so moved. I'd, I'd like to make it. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Motion's made by Mr. Kutzeradis. A second? I'll second that. Step Seconded, seconded by Ms. Kaplan. Uh, Ms. Cummings, your vote? Yes. Thank you. Mrs. Kaplan? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Kutzeradis? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Shannon? Mr. Shannon, unmute yourself, please. Yes. Thank you. And Ray Weldy, I vote yes. So the the motion for the resolution for the lot line change at 244 East Myrtle passes with a vote of 5-0. Thank you. Next Thank up you. is Thank you. Look forward to working with you guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Item number. Item number five on the agenda is a discussion with Jerry Clavers, and I believe Mr. Fenningham is here with him as attorney regarding a proposed site plan for Symphony Village on West Bristol Road by the railroad bridge. Correct. If I may uh, jump in. Uh, let me introduce, uh, with me tonight is Jerry Clavers. Um, there are three parcels involved, and with us also is Scott Orens. He's a partner with Ridgecrest Property that owns uh, Symphony Manor. Uh, there, there's three parcels involved. The one on Buck Road that is Symphony Manor is Mr. Orange's uh, property. Again, the uh, assisted living nursing home. Uh, Jerry Clabber's entity uh, owns the 005 or 242 West Bristol Road. That's the 10 acre tract. And then he, he personally owns the 006.1, which is 157 Henry Avenue. That's a little bit less than one acre. Um, the plan here, just in a, not in a sketch plan status, is that the properties are all class uh, zones R1. Um, I trace the history of Mr. Orange's uh, Symphony Manor, and it has a uh, uh, it has a nursing home, assisted facility, uh, zoning, uh, certificate of occupancy, um, uh, and we propose, Jerry and Scott, who's on the call, proposes to enter into an agreement whereby the 10 acres would have eight structures that would be uh, housing for what we refer to, I'll refer to as transition, transition housing. The Symphony Manor facility is underutilized, it's uh, underused, so it, th this is an attempt to get your reaction to a business plan that would cause a kind of combination of use, all in support of uh, senior citizens or those who need uh, housing and then transitioning to further assisted living um, accommodations. You mentioned 10, 10 units or eight? Eight. It, it's eight structures. Each each structure would have eight units. Okay. And it's and I, two I, floors, I, correct? Two floors, correct. Two floors, okay. And the plans that we, the plans that we dropped off last week, I hope you all have. They they show elevations as well as floor plans. And just to clarify, there's there's two different site plans. I want to make sure that you know that the ProTrack plan, which is dated March. 2020 is the current uh, sketch plan that shows eight structures on the 10 acre parcel. The one previously prepared 
uh, by Brian Elias had one of the eight structures on the smaller Henry Avenue lot. We've we've moved that off and we've put all eight onto the lower track, the 10 acre track. Uh, I also want to point out, as, and I, I think I advise Mike and Frank, that there is an existing six, six inch sewer line. Eight inch. Eight inch, excuse me, running from, from Bristol Road down southward uh, that is connected to the Philadelphia Interceptor. Jerry already receives uh, uh, you know, sewer bills and pays those most recently in, in the first quarter. So uh, the plan is to uh, develop the properties to, in a combination use. You'll see the what I'll call the bypass or access route that would be proposed from Bristol Road coming swinging down through the 10 acres across the smaller one acre track, linking in with Scott's existing parking uh, area on fronting on Buck Road. It would also connect to the northerly parking uh, area uh, uh, toward Bristol Road, and we just see this as a as a uh, utilizing you know it. utilizing the entire tract. We know we appreciate this opportunity tonight. We know that there has been other applications for uh, townhouses. townhouses, more density in the ten acre tract. So we're we're trying to come up with a way to uh, uh, boost, if I could say it that way, Symphony Manor, in combination with with Scott and his partners. Um, and, and let me just add, cause Frank asked me, I do represent, uh, Ridgecrest and Scott Aaron's as I, as I also represent Jerry Clabber. So we're trying to bring this all together and we just want to get your questions, reactions, uh, comments, uh, this evening. So we know which way to go. Well, I had a question and you actually answered it to me, for me, which was, would, um, Symphony Manor be able to handle the capacity? And you had said they're underutilized right now, so that wouldn't be an issue with Symphony Manor. No, they actually would. They, they're they're supportive of this whole uh, plan. And I see this similar to what Christ Home does, correct? In Warminster. Correct. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. John, was it was this the same property that maybe two or three years ago they would they were proposing building, maybe thirty single residential homes on it was actually right it was actually up to 40 townhouses and 40 and it was the concern was with was with density i'll tell you that in my analysis under our when one for single family with half acre lots probably the max would be 15 homes uh, somehow you know with some maybe dimensional variances right and that would be like a buy right use but again that leaves symphony manor on its own um the the con consideration would be those those interested in living in proximity to Symphony Manor wouldn't be buying single family homes of the level or price that would would work into that uh, R1 buy right use. So they're they're the kind of practical considerations that that Scott and Jerry brought to me, and I've been trying to you know guide them a bit and one owner. So so eventually, just so you understand. If 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 this sounds like it's a good plan, then Jerry and Scott will enter into an agreement where Scott's partnership will buy the 10 acre tract. Um, I'm not sure whether there would be a request to make it one parcel. Um, I'm not sure we want to, we want to do that. I'd consult with Frank and Mike, but the the goal here is to transition this property to be a complementary use for Symphony Manor. Thank you. Now, now I remember back when it was proposed for the townhomes or single family homes, Ed, you kind of weighed in because, you know, this was, you had spoken to some of your neighbors. It was in your area. Do you have any prediction on how this might be taken? You're muted, Ed. Scott, can you hear all this? Scott, are you on? Are we on mute? Mr. Shannon, unmute yourself. Okay. okay. We we can't hear Ed. Neither can we, John. Okay. 
Why, why Ed's trying to unmute. I like, I, I like the use of the land where it wouldn't be taxing on our school district. Yeah, yeah well, that's uh, that, that, uh, that's a good that's a good point. There wouldn't be you know there wouldn't be school children in in these uses. Yeah, I'm unmuted now. I figured it out. So go ahead, Ed. Yeah, yeah there were several different things, Jerry, as you remember lividly, of that there's uh, there was 32 houses, and then there was 40 houses, and then there was 15 houses, and you know your uh, uh, Dan tried to do something that didn't work. And I know you've been trying to do something with this property for a long, long time. Uh, this sounds like uh, I, I I don't have the the final drawings with me, uh, but it sounds like a great idea. Uh, how many how many houses would be there? How many facilities or whatever? Ed, there would be eight structures on the ten acre lot. Okay. How many? Each, each structure would have two floors, and each floor would have four uh, four units. Four units. So a total of eight units, uh, living units in each structure. Okay. John, are they one bedroom, two bedroom? What's the configuration? They're two bedrooms. I mean two. Yeah. And just I'll tell you, the planning is such that um, the primary occupants will have visitors. The idea is to make it conducive to children or grandchildren staying over a bit. But just single couple or single person use is the plan. And, and you go right from the yeah. parking lot. And into the John, unit. who, John, who would be responsible for? Uh, uh, I guess this is fully enclosed private property. So Symphony Manor would be responsible for, for snow removal and all of that on that property. Yes. 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 It'd be it'd be internal control. We uh, there's no plan to dedicate the uh, what I call the bypass road. Okay. okay. How how does how would that work underneath the bridge there? Right on Bristol Road. How is that going to be uh, an exit from from the property to Bristol Road? Is it going Henry Avenue? Well, that uh, that, that exit. There's actually two exits onto Bristol Road already uh, that that are have been in use. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. One right here and one right over here. Yeah. Yeah. One over here. One over from from Scott's property and one over there from my property. Right. Yeah. So do you, so do you think they, you'll have any? Do you think you'll have any problems with the bridge and the exit from the property with the bridge there? Turning turning left, Ed? Turning left? Uh, turning left or right, because some sometimes the traffic is pretty heavy back in that area. So I'm just curious about it more than anything else. We haven't had any reaction. Jer Jerry's saying no, no, he hasn't had any problem with that. No. And, uh, I mean, again, it's... Uh, the, the the answer might be in further planning it that we have we have access to the parking lot for Symphony Manor on the north. That's right. a, a double spread uh, route. Uh, right. We can we can talk about whether there's any reasons to control the traffic flow uh, out in or out on that on that further westerly access area. Yeah. Would would that be one of the plans to to exit and entrance from Symphony? At manner in and out and get further away from that bridge i'm a little concerned about the bridge and the prop and the uh traffic that comes through from there that's all i'm mean, the further away you get from that bridge i think you're you're going to be better off is my we'd, thought we'd, we'd be certainly open to you know considering that and making sure it's safe that most of the thing we, yeah, we did discuss that john yeah. and i did discuss that uh, because okay. in order to open up the Bristol, another access into Bristol Road, they would need a highway occupancy permit anyway. And right. I think NDOT would be reluctant because the line of sight Ooh. is so short with the, the tunnel there. Uh, right. That right. They, they would, we would lean more towards that main entrance. It wasn't very yeah, I would, I would agree with that. The further away you can get from that bridge, the better off you're going to be. Exactly. Yeah. No, and and very, not not history. not debating that. Just pointing out that that access, Mike, is already there, yeah, and that right. was a prior nursery use that nursery. was busy. Nursery. Busy. Yeah, but PennDOT's going to want revision there because you're going to you're you're changing it from a, a nursery or whatever to housing. So right. uh, that would be a, they may, may trip a traffic study. Uh, Joe Fiaco would probably be in, you know he would get involved to look at that. It, it may yeah. cause you more harm than good to use that. Well, um, so we're certainly open to that. We're certainly open to that. Right. 
Yeah, well, that property is right, right right behind my house, and I think it's a it could be a very nice use of that property because yeah. there's a lot of re retention basin down there, and there's a lot of water that accumulates in that area. So we want to be careful about that too. Not not today, but for a new a new piece of property being uh, used in there. Understood. Yep. But this hey, hey gentlemen, this is Tim Kutzeratis. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Uh, question: What are your plans with the uh, with the acre parcel on Henry Avenue? Is that planning on being any kind of entrance or exit? No, the just the bypass road will dissect it, come across it. But they on the plan, there's a building, but that building's been demolished. Uh, it was a house. It was a house there. Well, so, so the garage be demolished. The now. garage that is shown on there is also existing though, but that'll be demolished and uh, taken sure. away. So that'll be just uh, open land. Open. Okay. So Henry okay. Henry right. Avenue will, will not be used as an en entrance and exit. No, no, no. Okay, all right. Because no. there are properties now, uh, there. Have the uh, have the neighbors any of the neighbors on Henry or not that there's really many along Bristol, but have they been approached to any of these ideas yet? To see what they have to say. Uh, not by me. I don't, Jerry. No, we, no, we no, haven't. Because because, that's why one of the reasons yeah. why we have no no use of Henry Avenue at all. Yeah, we're not going to we're use not going to go there we're and not gonna use it and at all. This is just we're at my description. We're at first base. We're, we haven't spread out yet. Just getting your reaction. So okay. this would you you would hear more from them if you went in front of the Planning Commission, the Conservation District, and then the Zoning Board. Right. But we we have no intention of using Henry Avenue at all. Yeah. No. Okay. All right. Very good. I Thank think you. that answers a lot of problems, Jerry. So yeah. We're not being we're not being asked to vote tonight. Tonight was just a little peekaboo to see what's being planned and get your general reaction. So mm -hmm. I think John, they've gotten that. Does anybody have anything further to add? I do have a question. How sure. many just add uh, just curious, how many square feet is each unit? Uh, I got it right here. We have that. Hold on. Wait a minute. Huh? Wait a minute. I have it in here. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Jerry's scrolling through the plans. I know. I saw. I saw it myself, but I don't know the number. It was on here. Eight units. Somewhere. Yeah. Frank, it's on there, or Mike, it's on there somewhere. I just can't. I can't find it. Well. You can send it to us tomorrow, John, and I'll give it to the board. Yeah, okay. the units are big, a big unit. Yeah, if you look at the last, let me go to the last sheet. How many people in each unit, Jerry? Huh? How many people in each unit? It's oh, a for single, probably singles. No more, probably it's two bedroom units, Ed. Two unit, bedroom units there. I think each one. Right. If you look at the floor plans that you have there. Right. The uh, uh, every unit has two bedrooms, good sized bedrooms, two baths, kitchen, area for washer and dryer, separate room, separate big closets, kitchen. Uh, uh, would this would this be for the benefit also of the people in the uh, in the home that's there, Symphony it's, Manor? Excuse me. Would they would the residents of those new properties be part of Sym Symphony Manor, or they'd have the idea, relatives yeah. in there? Yeah, yes. the idea is to transition. Long term plan is those residents would transition to Symphony Manor. Oh, it's all right. like it's okay. just like what we have now. I live in Christ's home myself. Uh huh. I have a residence in Christ's home, and we we live our, in our own unit there. Okay. Yeah. And they take care of everything, uh, but we, of course, take care of the inside. Uh, and then we can use the dining room facilities in the other uh, units there from Christ Home. And yeah. all the maintenance for the, uh, uh, the units there is done by the uh, maintenance staff uh, from uh, Christ Home. This will be the same thing. Are you, I this know. I've, I've, I've seen your house, and it's really nice. And yes. so this pro these properties are going to be like your house? That is correct. That, that, sure. and, and also, the way yeah. we're, we're taking care of our architect did a great job, Bernie Elias there, 
because you you look at the building, they look like a like a larger house. And then the bottom unit there, let's say you enter enter and exit to the left of the house, and that's it's all parked in there. There's not one step involved. When you go uh -huh. from the parking lot into the uh, uh, units there and the ground units there, you walk straight in. You don't take no steps. The upstairs, the parking area is on the opposite side of the building, and then you walk again right from there. Uh, because we took care of the, we, we utilized the contours of all the land that's there now. And you'll yeah. see that on, if you study the, the drawings, the floor plans and the elevations, it's, there's no need for elevators and no need for stairs. People can walk directly from the park and from their cars directly into the unit. This mm -hmm. is what I think it's so unique about this particular facility. It's pre yeah. it's pretty it's a pretty well planned uh, yeah. development. I, I'm right. impressed with it. And then myself. the people would would be from from uh, from the symphony people would would have their little transportation buses like we have at Christ Home. And if people want to care for going for the meals, people can cook themselves too. That's what we uh -huh. do. Uh, but if you care to go get meals there uh, at the at the, the two big dining rooms and two big kitchens that are. Uh, in in uh, in symphony there you can do so, okay. Yeah. Medical well, facility, uh, uh, the uh, therapy the therapy areas there. Uh, yeah. You have a religious room for people to go to, you know, for different faiths. Okay. Uh, does the board have any more questions? No. No. I don't okay. have any. I huh? Thank you. And, and each one, each room, also, each unit yeah. also have. A, a, a outside balcony, you can people can sit. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Okay. John, you, yeah, like, sorry. I think you got sounds, your input. Sounds good. I, I'm in Florida. I haven't seen the, pl the plans yet, but okay. I'll take a look when I get home. So right. uh, let me just thank you again for yes. this. This is very, very invaluable. I will uh, consult with Scott and uh, Jerry and Mike. I'll probably be in touch because uh, what the next step will be uh, an agreement and then an application on both of their behalfs. That's where I see sure. this going. Let me know. Okay, okay great. All right. All right, thanks, folks. Thanks. Thank Good you. luck, Jared. Thank, you. Thank, thank, you, very, thank you very much, Ed. Thank yep. you. You're in Florida now, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Just for you. a couple of weeks. <laughs> there we go. Good. Thank All right. you. Have a good night. All right, folks. thanks. Bye. 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 Thank, you. thank you. Thanks, Frank. Thanks, Mike. Next up on the agenda, item number six, award the 2021 Bucks County Consortium Road Materials bid. I believe there are four different motions on there. I'll let turn it over to Mr. McDonald just to give a brief explanation of the items that were that we've uh, bid out and what we're making motions on. Can you all hear me? Yes. Yep. Okay. So this is regarding the 2021 Bucks County Consortium Road Materials bid results. Uh, New Britain Township handles it for us, and we thank them for it. Uh, I'm recommending that we award the bid to the following four companies. Miller Materials, that's for a super paved nine and a half millimeter wearing course, which to, to you layman, that's the black top that your tires are on when you drive down the street. Uh, and that's actually 52 cents more a ton than last year. Uh, the second would be American Bituminous Company for our cold patch at $142.50 a ton. And that's $6.60 more than last year. Uh, third is Asphalt Maintenance Solutions Company uh, for Crack Dealer, $0.79 cents a pound. And that's $0.11 cents more than last year. And finally, Eureka Stone Quarry for our 2A modified stone, a 13 and a quarter a ton delivered. And that's $0.50 cents more a ton than, than the previous year. And we have our super paved 25 millimeter binder, base binder at a uh, Forty dollars and twenty-five cents a ton, and that's a dollar ten more a ton. So the prices have all gone up slightly. Mm -hmm. Contract periods from April first, twenty twenty-one to March to March thirty-first, twenty twenty-two, and the total estimated cost for the, the materials is, is around a little over sixteen thousand dollars. So it's a slight increase from last year, but it's really not too bad, considering. So I'm recommending we award those four companies the bid. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. And, and according to the paperwork we, we received, this was bid out to six different organizations, and this was the low bid um, on all of them, correct? That's correct, yes. 
Thank you. Is, is this going to solve all of our problems out on the roads? <laughs> <laughs> I'm being funny. <laughs> you're, not, you're a lot further than, than Florida, I think. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought you. Were, yeah. Right. Okay. Um. If does any other board members have any other questions? Uh, no. Hearing no. Hearing none, then motion number one, we would need a motion to award the 2021 Bucks County Consortium Road Materials bid to Miller Materials, a low bidder on Super Pave, 9.5 millimeter wearing at $46.98 a ton. Would anyone like to make that motion? I'll make it. Made by Mr. Shannon, second. I'll second. Kaplan. Second by Ms. Kaplan, thank you. Uh, Ms. Cummings, your vote? Yes. Thank you, Ms. Kaplan. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Kutsaratis. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Shannon. Yes. Thank you, and Ray Weldy, I vote yes. So that motion passes a vote five zero. Motion two would be to award the 2021 Bucks County Consortium Road Materials bid to American Bituminous Company Inc. The low bidder on QPR cold patch, one hundred forty two dollars and fifty cents a ton delivered. Um, I'll make that motion. Would anyone like to second it? I'll second. Seconded by Mr. Shannon. Ms. Cummings, your vote? Yes. Thank you. Ms. Kaplan? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Kutsaratis? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Shannon? Yes. Thank you. And Ray Weldy, I vote yes also. That motion passes with a vote of 5 0. Motion 3 would be to award the 2021 Bucks County Consortium Road Materials bid to Asphalt Maintenance Solutions LLC. The low bidder on Cook. 9005 crack sealer at 79 cents per pound delivered. Would anyone like to make that motion? I'll make that motion, Ray. Okay. Thank you. Made by Ms. Cummings. A second? I'll second. Seconded by Mr. Shannon. Thank you. Ms. Cummings, your vote? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Kaplan? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Kutsaratis? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Shannon? Yes. Thank you, Ray Weldy. I vote yes. That motion passes with a vote of 5 0. And our last motion, motion number four, would be to award the 2021 Bucks County <laughs> 40 materials bid to Eureka Stone Quarry Inc., the low bidder on number 2A Stone at $13.25 a ton delivered, and Super Paver 25.0 millimeter binder at $40.25. FOB. Would anyone like to make that motion? I'll make that motion, Deb Kaplan. Made by Ms. Kaplan, thank you. A second? I'll second. Seconded by Mr. Shannon, thank you. Ms. Cummings, your vote? Yes. Thank you, Ms. Kaplan? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Kutsaratis? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Shannon? Yes. Thank you, Ray Weldy, I vote yes. That motion passes with a vote of 5-0. Um, thanks, Mark, for that update. Thank you. Appreciate that. And getting those low bids in order. Um, that is our last agenda item. I'll turn it over to Mr. Galdo now for the manager's report. Thank you, Board Chair. Um, just some brief items. Uh, Township cleanup day, we're tentatively scheduled for the 24th, and that would be starting at 9 a.m., God willing. Um, the sanitation rebates, again, it started around February 8th, and it's extended to July 31st. Uh, pending if the offices are still closed due, due to COVID, you would just please call the office, ask for Denise. Uh, currently, right now, 323 rebates have been issued to date. It's actually uh, basically staying true to form as in as in the past year. So the numbers are looking good there as far as the rebates. Basically, the criteria, this was raised at the last meeting. It is on the website, uh, but I, I will repeat it. The Lower South Township resident, you have to be... You have to be a senior citizen, 65 or 65 and over years old. You have to be a veteran, 50% or more than 50% disabled. And you have to be a homeowner for the entire year of 2020. And it's only applicable to the uh, primary residents only. And then last is just a discussion on any potential uh, salary increases that would be uh, requesting an approval uh, going back to 1121. I'll leave that to the board. Uh, Joe, I thank you for that update on the cleanup day and the the, the 
uh, trash rebates regarding the budget increases. Um, would you what the board would like you to do would be go down the line for the department heads and then what the recommend recommended um, percentage raise would be for those individuals if you could do that. Sure. As far as the public works director, uh, based off of his performance evaluation, uh, basically it was the second. It was above average, basically, um, typically exceeds expectation and outstanding uh, at times. So uh, that would be for the public works director. Um, so his appraisal was very well. Uh, the Although he's not part of this particular issue, because there hasn't been a, a formal decision, um, the fire marshal's office was conducted. He also was basically um, meets job requirements and exceeds expectations as far as uh, Chris, uh, Chris, uh, Chris, oh, I'm sorry, the administrative assistant. Um, she basically meets requirements or exceed expectations. Um, as far as Lisa Adams, um, and that was uh, written up. Um, let's see, that was basically meet job requirements. So they were the four individuals that were reviewed and, and had a performance evaluation on. And what, what is the recommended salary increase then for 2021? The budget, the budget range baked into the, everything's baked into the budget. You could give as little as, as like you feel like, um, and the, basically we put in around 5% on a given year. So just in case if we need fluff um, in another line item, it is there. But up to 5% is the max, typically around 2 or 4 and a half or 4% in good years. Um, with this being, again, like you said, a, a challenge year, it's up to the board to make that determination. But I just wanted to give you the performance evaluation part. Okay, and are there other employees that are um, that there are proposed raises for? The other, the other two are the um, police administration. That would be the lieutenant as well as the chief. And I do not. The, the township manager does not do their performance evaluation. Okay, and that's been the past history, from what I understood. Typically in prior years, what have they received percentage wise? Typically, typically they receive the contract amount plus 1%. Okay, thank you. What's their contract amount, Joe? In this year, it is 3.5%. Plus one. Plus one, yeah. Plus one, okay. And then the plus one. Although those, those administrators aren't part of the uh, bargaining unit, correct? Yes, they're not part of the bargaining unit. The bargaining, and let's say for the Teamsters component, the average, in, the average increase basically was almost around like $2,100. For the uh, the average police uh, uh, police for patrolmen, uh, the average raise was uh, $3,576, I believe, off the top of my head. So that was the, that was typically the range that we had for the uh, CBA type individuals. Thank you. And we so also that's, a, that's already also, negotiated with the police department, right, Joe? Yep, it's per the contract, sir. Thank you. And then I guess our last one is that we would have to um, make a recommendation and vote on a raise salary increase for the township manager. Correct. That's if the board deems it. I'm fine. Okay. Okay. Um, I mean, I, I know the other board members have comments. If I could lead off by saying that this year is not like, to me at least, is not like other previous years. Um, in other previous years, we've doled out raises of three and a half, four, four and a half percent um, while we had um, income rolling in through the earned income tax, our rateables, and our business mercantile tax. This year was not a year like that. I mean, we lost money every month on the EIT. There are employees that have been laid off. 
there are employees that not only were laid off, they went and had sought employment elsewhere and that will never come back. And um, somehow we were able to get through all that without a, a tax increase again, which is a credit to our township manager and finance director, but I'm not in favor of a three and a half or a four or four and a half percent increase this year. Um, and I, my feeling was that uh, the the employees deserve a raise, but I think the raise should be more uh, subdued, and the raise should be more in line with what the economy has seen for the past year. Um, and I don't think we have the luxury of forking over money like we have in the past. This is, you know, if things pick back up and next year we're back to normal, fine, but that's my two cents worth on it. I'm in agreement. Um, I was going to comment as well on, but I don't want to, I don't need to really repeat what you just said, Ray, but they were my thoughts exactly the same. And it's a shame. I mean, there are employees or department heads that forfeited part of their salary last year so that the township, you know, could remain more sovereign. Um, many, many people did that. And, um, you know, we would like to reward those employees. And not only that, they came to work through all of COVID's up and downs and they showed up for work every day. I just don't think we're in a position to, you know, I was thinking more along the lines of 2.5% which is somewhere in the middle. It is a raise, but it's not the raise that everybody was looking for. Well, I think I think the people that have stayed on and stayed working and, you know, continue to do the job and working for, you know, two, three people at one time. And I think they're certainly entitled to the two and a half. Uh, I don't think they would be expecting any more than that based on the situation that we have. But those are the dedicated people that we have in the township, as far as I'm concerned. And uh, I think they would be uh, very acceptable to the two and a half percent. And hopefully in the, in the future that that uh, their concern, their work ethic uh, allows us to do something for them uh, at the end of this problematic area that we're in. I, I agree with that, Ray, that each, each year each year is a separate year that we're looking at. This year, we're looking at it in the circumstances that we that we have in front of us. Um, doesn't say what next year will be. Yeah, I guess un unfortunately, Kim, we don't know what that's going to be. You know, <clears throat> Kim, would, would you like to? Do you have anything? That you yeah, want? I mean, I'd I'd like to. You know, I'd like to give everything to all of our hardworking employees. You know, I uh, I am definitely on the same line with the rest of the board. I do have to apologize though with the, uh, with the technical issues I was having earlier. I was hoping that I could uh, talk about one particular department head, and uh, it never did come up with the issues I was having tonight. And I'm a little torn now on whether I should um, on, on whether I should have. Uh, Mr. Mr. Galdo's uh, vote not lumped in with everybody else. Um, I just uh, I wish there was a way we could go back and have a uh, an executive session right now. I don't think there is a Kim, way. Kim, Kim, since you were cut off, I shared your thoughts that you shared uh, with me. Oh well, thank you. Yeah, we were made aware of that, Kim. So, you know, if that's if that's your desire, um, we would then need a motion to award uh, the department heads as described by Mr. Gaudo uh, with a 2.5% raise, except for Mr. Gaudo, and then we could vote on that one separately. Is that agreeable? That's agreeable. I would just, I wish I had the opportunity to speak to Mr. Gaudo about it, though, uh, which, you know, obviously we, we didn't tonight. Okay. Uh, could we? Uh, could we? Could we vote on everybody but Mr. Galdo, and then tomorrow maybe I could have the opportunity to speak to Joe personally, and then we could continue this at the uh, the next meeting. That that would be up to the other board members. Do the other board members want to delay the vote, or 
we're severed well, the vote tonight. For everybody, and... I just... yeah. uh, I'm okay if if um if Tim wants to vote on Joe at the following meeting, and then we'll vote on everyone else this evening. I'm fine with that. Okay, because it would be retroactive anyway. So. Exactly. Right. Okay. And it's okay. definitely retroactive, though. Yeah, the racist right. would be would re retroactive. Yeah. yeah, till January first. Okay. 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 So then we would need a motion to award the department, department heads, as, as described by Mr. Gatto, um, with a two point five percent raise this evening, retroactive to January first, two thousand twenty-one, um, and then uh, separately we'll we'll speak about Mr. Gatto's. Um, status at the next meeting. So, would anyone like to make a motion? I'd like I'll to make. make one, motion, I'd like right? to make one comment first, if I may. Sure. That and that is, Joe. Are you okay with this in, in idea, Joe? Joe, there. No. No. He, Joe Galdo. He is there. Right. He's the G. I think he's muted. Mr. Galdo, unmute yourself, please. Well, I would hope that he's okay with that. Uh, he's been pretty good for that stuff right along. So I I, I didn't want to interrupt the, uh, the vote, but I just wanted to ask that question. It's a shame Joe's not. Yeah turned on. Did anybody make the motion? You suggested it, Ray. I don't think anyone made it. I, the motion he, he's not been made. Uh, he's I had did. technical difficulty. He just came up to my door stating that he's okay with that. Okay, so good. Thank you, Peter. Sorry, sorry about that. Okay, so then the, the, the motion again that someone would make would be to award the department heads as described by Mr. Gatto, except for Mr. Gatto. Um, a 2.5% raise for the year 2021, retroactive to January 1st, 2021. Would anyone like to make that no. motion? Don't, don't move, Dre. I, I made that earlier, too. Thank you. Motion made by Mr. Kutsaratis, a second? I'll second it. Seconded by Mr. Shannon. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Cummings, your vote? Yes. Thank you. Ms. Kaplan? I'm a yes, however, they're not all department heads. I was thinking that. You're not all Wasn't department it? heads. No, it was a department heads as described by Mr. Gowdo, right? But they're not all department heads as far as employees. They're not all department heads. Okay, then I'll amend a motion to uh, the employees and the department heads as described by Mr. Gowdo. Um, we would need a motion to award them a 2.5% raise except for Mr. Gowdo. Do that, that would be fine. Uh, go ahead, Ken. So moved. Thank you. Made by Mr. Uh, Kutsaratis, a second? I'll second. Seconded by Mr. Shannon. Thank you. Ms. Cummings? Yes. Thank you. Ms. Kaplan? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Kutsaratis? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Shannon? Yes. Thank you. And Ray Weldy, I vote yes. So that motion for salaries. Um, is approved with a vote of 5-0. Mr. Gowdo, is there anything else for the manager's report? Still uh, having technical difficulty. Uh, I think that was the last item on the manager's report. Okay. Um, Something came up recently um, that we waited until after the manager's report to bring up. Um, the board became aware recently of uh, some incidents that we reported to us um, involving the Parks and Recreation Director. Um, as part of our due diligence, those incidents were investigated. Um, um, that investigation has been concluded. The board has been apprised of the results of the investigation in the last two executive sessions. And uh, as a result of that, uh, the board is prepared to act tonight. Um, the Parks and Recreation Director, as everyone knows, is Mr. Gilbert. 
Matt Gilbert, and um, based on the information that was presented to us, um, I believe the board, someone from the board, um, would make a motion tonight to act uh, on the the incidents that have been reported to us. If I have that right, um, if any board members would like to weigh in, now would be the time. I would like to make uh, a motion that uh, we chastise him with some time off. It was a silly, stupid thing that he did. Um, he's done a good job, in my opinion, uh, ever since he's been in that position. And uh, if we come up with some time frame when he would be chastised, uh, I would agree to that. Mr. Sean has made that motion. Would anyone, is there anyone that would second that? Hearing none, the motion uh, was not seconded, so the motion fails as presented. Um, I'll make a motion myself that based on the information that was provided to the board, um, that the board would move to terminate Mr. Gilbert's relationship and employment with the township um, effective this evening. I'll second that motion. That motion has been seconded by Ms. Kaplan. Um, we'll do a roll call vote. Ms. Cummings? Uh, yes. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Kaplan? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Kutsaratis? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Shana? No. Thank you. Ray Weldy, I vote yes on that. Um, that motion then moves forward with the vote of four to one. Uh, last, next up is supervisors' comments. Um, we'll go down the line. Miss Cummings. I want to thank uh, Jeff Yako and the uh, Youth Advisory Council, uh, Deb and Ray and um, uh, Carol, that were all sounded like they were at the meeting. Um, the effort with working with the Shamini Coalition of Youth um, in anything that you know we can pro provide our youth and um, you know getting that word out to everybody in the public um, it sounds like a wonderful venture for the township and the you know the youth within um, the Chamonix Lower South Middletown um, so thanks again for you know um, being there and presenting that to us excited to hear about the pool contracts I'm sure that is a um, that will be a long-awaited um, event for for everybody listening and um, hearing about the pools, um, hopefully opening um, this summer with the dolphin and the uh, Fertibar pools. Um, just want to let everyone know that we have two nice warm days coming up and enjoy them. I think it's going to get cold again, but there's warmer days ahead. Good night. Thank you, Sue. Um, Mr. Kucharatis? Yeah, you know, I, uh, I want to talk about something that I brought up in the past, you know, about local family business in our township. I don't know if anybody has had the opportunity to see the Lower Southampton Spirit, but we have another great family-run business that, you know, I personally know the uh, the owners of, Joe McIlvain Tree Service. I just want to give them a, a big shout out on 33 years of service. Not all here in the township, but, you know, Joe's been a resident of the township for, oh gosh, probably 35, 40 years and you know, had his business here in the township for almost as long. Uh, so, you know, I want to commend him for all his years of service. And uh, and and lastly, too, another another family-run business that has been here forever. Uh, just had a terrible terrible loss. Uh, Town and Country Kennels, good friends of mine, the uh, the Loney family. Mr. Loney had passed away the other day, and I want to send my deepest condolences to his family. His friends, his customers, Mr. Loney touched many, many people throughout all his years in this township. And, you know, he will sorely, sorely be missed by me and uh, and many others. My, my deepest condolences to their their entire family. That's it, Ray. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Shannon. Yes, thank you. Uh, Mr. Fiaco and his concern about the children is magnificent he's really done a nice job uh, he's uh, keeps moving forward with it and uh, 
I think he'll make a lot of support with that. Um, the pool with Matt, uh, I think that's a, uh, it should be a good thing. He's negotiated that uh, right up to now. And uh, I think it's it's going to work out right, really nice. Uh, Mr. Clabbers is finally uh, coming to some ideas about his property for it's 12 acres and that's almost behind my house. Uh, but I think his uh, ideas are pretty good at this point. Madrigals, uh, the De Pasquale people, they sound like they're doing a, do a really nice job also. And Mr. Looney, uh, we know him from the Fisherville Business Association. He's a longtime member. Uh, his son is now also a member. And uh, he's done a tremendous job for the FBA and obviously for his uh, business that he has in, in Lower South. Thank you. Thank you, right? Ms. Kaplan? Um, yes, I'm very pleased with what the Youth Advisory Council is doing for our youth, especially with this project that they um, did before us. And I thank them for doing that. And I think, and I'm hoping that there's a lot of um, students that would be interested in it. I've actually passed that along to an organization that um, is a club within the uh, Interact and Early Act. So hopefully they will get involved with it as well. And I'm looking forward to hearing some uh, good news from the Youth Advisory Council on this. And I'm very glad that we were able to give them the flyers that they requested from us. In color too. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Thanks, Deb. Um, and and I, I think the Youth Advisory Council is um, hit something good here because, you know, as a parent, everyone's parents and, uh, and as an educator, um, kids will listen to other kids. So this, this podcast um, idea um, to have kids produce a podcast and present it to other kids about the dangers of vaping and opioids and drug use and smoking and things like that is a fantastic idea. And uh, I think it's worth a great shot to thank them for their dedication. I'd also like to thank the Lower Southampton Veterans Advisory Council. They recently donated $500 to Operation First Response. Operation First Response serves America's finest um, veterans and their families with personal and financial needs. Um, so thanks to the VAC, um, the money they take in from the Travis Mannion uh, run for heroes and so it goes right back out the door to other great organizations like this. I'd like to thank Tracy Siler Morgan again. She's a local realtor um, and a Lower Southampton resident. Tracy's worked tirelessly to collect food pantry donations um, and yesterday she was able to drop off her collection of donations to Pequessing uh, Middle School's food pantry. The food pantry was wiped out they were badly in need of food. Tracy put together a drive and up yesterday. Thank you, Tracy. I was also contacted by Mr. Stuart Lakernick, a chiropractor um, from Trevos. Mr. Lakernick is going to run a similar program. So um, if you have a chance, you could drop by his office um, and drop off something for the food pantry. Yesterday, Mr. Uh, the township manager and I um, took a ride around a, a couple areas of the township. Um, being that spring is coming in 11 days and, and it's been 70 degrees or supposed to be close to 70 degrees. And we took a look at the winter's damage um, and we found a lot that had happened. We found abandoned cars on the road with uh, inspections expired four years ago and no tags. We found cars parked in backyards that were sinking into the mud. Um, rusting hulks of trucks on people's property, boats that were uncovered, fences that had come undone, and the fences were around in ground pools. Presented a danger to children and animals who could get into the pool or the cover and drown. And uh, we're working on that. Those those rider grounds are going to continue. So um, we're hopeful that people can clean up the mess that winter caused. Um, and that's all the comments I have. Uh, I neglected at the end of uh, the the motion that we took for the parks and rec um, and I would like 
at this point to address the board and ask a motion to be made to authorize the township manager to advertise for the park and recreation director's position as soon as possible. Um, we're going to need a new park and recreation director um, and the busy season's coming up. So um, I'd like to get that advertised as soon as possible so that we can um, develop a, a group of applicants and begin interviewing and get that position filled as soon as we can. So would anyone like to make a motion to direct the manager to advertise the park and rec position as soon as possible? I'll make that motion, Deb Kaplan. Thank you, Ms. Kaplan, a second? I'll second that, Ray. Thank you, second to my Ms. Cummings. Uh, Ms. Cummings, your vote? Yes. Thank you, Ms. Kaplan? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Kucharatis? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Shannon? No. Thank you, and Ray Weldy, I vote yes. So that motion to um, direct the township manager to advertise a park and rec position passes with a vote of four to one. If there aren't any further comments or any further business, we would need a motion to adjourn tonight's meeting. I'll make that motion, Deb Kaplan. Made by Ms. Kaplan, thank you. Um, I'll second it. Ray Weldy. Um, Ms. Cummings, your vote? Yes. Thank you, Ms. Kaplan? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Kucharatis? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Shannon? Yes. Thank you, Ray Weldy, I vote yes. The motion to adjourn passes 5-0. Thank you, everyone, for attending and getting the business done that we had to get done tonight. Have a good evening. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night.